I know there are some of my colleagues in the house that are doing more digging on IOM or OIM, however you want to refer to them. And um, we need answers uh, in regards to what this organization is doing. But what's really interesting is you, I've seen them at every stop now. When I was down at the southern border at McAllen and then went down to uh, Panama, I mean, they had a major facility. If you remember that big tent that they had set up, yeah. um, after the migrants would come out on the Padaguas on the uh, Turquesa River, they had a little community. Do you remember the name of that town that they were settled in? It's where we stayed in that little motel. Uh, San Vicente. Uh, San Vicente. San Vicente. Yeah. So anyhow, they had a, a big camp set up there with tents and uh, you know, temporarily set up. And very prominently was a sign there that said IOM. And then when I went to Fort McCoy at the end of August, when they just started bringing in the evacuees from Afghanistan, it's one of the things we heard from the commanding officer when we asked him, what's the process, things like that. He talked about you know, the resettlement organizations, Catholic charities, other faith-based organizations. But he also said that IOM will be here um, uh, coordinating the handoff of the evacuees to those faith-based organizations. They care, they are, uh, it's very clear, they have a critical role in the process of moving these people, as generally calling them migrants, into the United States. They have a critical role, and we need to get some answers as far as how they're being compensated. Um, what authority are they, they using? My understanding is that the State Department um, uh, contracts with them to do this process, but we need a lot more answers because at this point, for the American people, they're working in the shadows doing this, and there needs to be much more sunlight that is put on this process.